Hey guys, it's Greg Alexander again with Alexander the Greg Fishing. And today I wanted to talk to you about how to be a better fisherman. Not just bass fishermen, but any fisherman. This applies to all fishing. So the first thing we need to understand about being a better fisherman is there's no magic pill and there's no secret lure that's going to make you a better fisherman. Sure, you can get a secret lure and for a little while you may do a little bit better on it. But if that's your only bullet in your gun, <laughs> you're going to run out of ammo. So you need to keep your gun loaded all the time. So the very most important thing that you need if you want to be a better fisherman some of you want to be professional fishermen. Some just want to be a better fisherman. Some just want to catch more fish to, to take home and eat or whatever. Is you actually have to spend time fishing. It's called time on the water, T-O-W. You've probably heard it before. I could stop right there. We'd be done. Time on the water. Because if you spend time on the water, you gain experience under all types of circumstances. So there's a biblical principle that you reap what you sow. So how much you put into it, you get out with extra. <clears throat> Excuse me. A farmer, if he puts six seeds out, he's going to get at most six plants, right? If a farmer puts out 600 seeds, he's got a chance of 600 plants. And it's the same way with fishing. What you put into it, you get out magnified to some degree. So you give yourself better odds. The more you reap, the more you sow. So investment in fishing is the key, investment of your time. So how often, here's a question I would ask you. If you want to be a better fisherman, how many times a month do you go fishing? Some of you once. You know, if the weather's good, some of you twice, some of you every weekend, some of you twice on the weekend, some of you go on the weekend and during the weekday, you know, and a lot of most of us work for a living. So we, we got to work around, you know, we got to fish around our work. So I fish a lot of local tournaments. And when I go out to pre-fish after work or that I got a day off or on the weekend or whatnot, You'll see some club tournaments or whatnot going on out there. But if there's not a club tournament, most of the time when I go pre-fishing around here, I see the same three or four guys will be out there when I'm pre-fishing. And who are these three or four guys? They're the ones winning tournaments. So what you put in, you get out. People complain sometimes, well, it's the same guys winning the same tournaments. Well, it's because it's the same guys putting the time in. It's the same guys uh, actually burning gas and fishing and trying this and trying that and actually investing into the upcoming tournaments. So if you want to be a better fisherman, you got to spend more time on the water. That's that's as simple as that. You, you, you're just not going to be able to, to sustain any type of success without sustained time on the water. Number two, at, and this is all in addition to time on the water, is you got to be able to mix it up, okay? If you've got pet lures, like I'm going to throw, you, you say you're going to throw a wacky rig Senko, and that's what you're going to do. Well, you're going to get what you're going to get with a wacky rig Senko. And you may win the tournament now and again, or you may catch a lot of little fish or whatever. And if that's your goal, just to catch a lot of little fish, and the little fish are eating a Senko, then that's great. But if you want to be a better fisherman, you got to be able to put those pet lures down and reach into your tackle box, go to Bass Pro Shops or some store, and get some things that you maybe aren't real comfortable throwing or you haven't thrown before or whatnot, and you got to try this stuff under dis different uh, circumstances. Another thing when I talk about mixing it up, not just with lures, is you got to mix up areas, you got to mix up spots, you got to mix up conditions. So, when you go fishing, say you're pre-fishing for a tournament, or even just want to be a better fisherman and you're not a tournament fisherman, you got to be able to drive by your favorite spot. 
You gotta be able to drive by it. Just drop. I'm not fishing that today. I'm gonna fish something else because you gotta expand your territory. You gotta expand your thinking. You gotta expand the, the areas that you fish. You can't just get stuck doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, if you're pre-fishing tournaments, in my opinion, if you're pre-fishing on a spot that you know you're gonna fish during the tournament, no matter what, that just doesn't even make any sense. Because all you can do is hurt yourself. I just wanna check to see if they're there. We check them on tournament day. That's when they need to be there. If you stick a fish, you know, two, three, two, three days before a tournament, um, you're not catching him in that tournament. You're not gonna do it. So you have to be able to discipline yourself to do things different than what you've done in the past. Number three, in addition, number two, one was time on the water, two is mix it up. Number three is you have to be proficient at all lures and techniques. Again, this takes time. You're not gonna learn it in your living room. You're not gonna learn it even watching YouTube videos or whatnot. You can see what they're doing, but you won't become proficient in it until you actually have some OJT, on-the-job training, or on-the-water training, called OWT. Uh, and you're not going to be the best deep crankbaiter in the world, maybe, or the best Carolina rig fisherman in the world, or the best jerkbait fisherman in the world, or whatnot. But you have to be proficient in all areas because certain days call for certain techniques and if you've never done it before, you don't have any confidence in it because you haven't spent any time doing it. And that day, that's what's happening. And you're just going to keep doing what you always do. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get beat or you're not going to catch fish because it's not happening that way today. So the key is be proficient in all lures and techniques with those lures. Uh, you don't want big holes in your game. You don't want big holes in your game. Think of baseball. When they're scouting for baseball to become professional baseball players, they scout on three things. Can he hit? Can he run? Can he throw? And then they give you a score for each one. I think it's up to like 60 is a perfect score in baseball. So if, you, if you're a 60 hitting, a 60 running, and a 60 throwing, you're going to be the number one draft pick out of college. So you gotta, you got to have your whole game has to be in play. You can't be a one hit one. You can't, you know, you're never going to get drafted in baseball, for example, if all you can do is hit, but you can't throw and you can't run. I mean, you might get drafted by an American League team as a DH, but that doesn't, that don't, you know, that, that's not the optimal deal. So, and then I would add to that the mental game along with the proficiency of the lures, proficiency of the techniques that you need. You also need proficiency of mental game. And that mental game just, you know, some people are born with a little bit stronger mentality than others, but uh, pressure or fishing tournament situations or whatnot helps you increase your mental game. Now, the next thing, get informed. If you don't know that that lure is the hottest lure going right now, and that's what everybody's catching them on, then you're gonna be behind eight ball. So you need to be informed. You inform yourself by reading magazines, talking to people about fishing and watching YouTube videos or Facebook link videos or whatnot, you gotta be informed. Next thing you need to be a better fisherman is you gotta be organized, right? If you don't know where anything is in your boat and you come up on a situation and it calls for this lure and I know I put it in here somewhere and you spend 15 minutes looking for it or whatnot, that's 15 minutes of lost time that you could have been fishing. So you need to be organized. What I do sometimes in certain tournaments, not all the time, but in certain tournaments when I'm not really sure 
I don't have a real good grasp on exactly what's going to play out that day. As I put together a box, a Plano box, with everything that I want to try that day, if plan A fails, plan B fails, plan C fails, right on down the line, I put myself a box together for that day, just that day, it'll be a day box. And then it may change the next time I go fishing. So be organized. Next thing you need to be a better fisherman, keep your equipment up. If you got beat up old reels that don't work right, your rods are less than stellar, you haven't changed your line, you know, in a good while, using dry rod, <laughs> dry rotted braid, I've seen it. Um, your trolling motor's clinkety clankety, your batteries are, are it won't get through the day, things like that. You gotta keep your equipment up, okay? You don't have to have the best equipment, you just gotta keep it up, okay? When I was younger, you know, I fished with a lot cheaper rods and reels because that's all I could afford. So that leads us right into the next thing. What's the next thing to be a better fisherman? Use the best equipment that you can afford, okay? Better equipment gives you better results. Match your equipment to the situation. Throwing a crankbait, you don't wanna throw it on a broomstick. You know, you need some, some play. So the right equipment, but the best equipment for, for what you can afford. I'll give you an example. Nobody plays golf with a croquet club. Why? It'll hit the ball, sure, but you're going to lose every time because that croquet club does not have the uh, quality it needs to have to achieve a winning game. So have, have the best equipment you can afford. Be teachable, be flexible. It's, it's good to be hard-headed when you know you're right, but a lot of times when you think you know you're right, you're not. <laughs> so just be teachable and be flexible to change what you've already decided in your head is gonna be the way to catch them. Never assume, another key, never assume the fish aren't biting. I fall into this trap. A lot of other people fall into this trap. You're not catching them. You're thinking, man, these fish just plain ain't biting today. And then somebody comes in with a 25 pound bag and you're like, what in the world happened? Well, you get, you can get stuck sometimes thinking, always push, pursue. This ain't happening. You got to be willing to change. You got to be willing to uh, modify your game that day. Uh, Another thing we need to be a better fisherman, improve your casting. Again, that's not going, it's not going to happen in your living room. It's going to happen out on the water, multiple casts in multiple situations under docks, under trees, long distance casting, whatever, with a spinning rod, with a casting rod, uh, with different action rods. You, you, you need to be able to improve your casting because if you can't hit the spot where the fish lives, you, you, you can't catch him, right? So improve your casting. That's practice, practice, practice. That goes right on back to number one time on the water. Now, another big key is fish the moment. Fish the moment. I've made this mistake, I don't know how many times over the years where I assumed I was gonna catch him on a certain spot on a certain time of the day with a certain lure. Why? Because I had so many times in the past. And so you try to force something to happen based on what you've done in the past. Well, the past is the past, right? Sometimes the past repeats itself, sometimes it doesn't. The only thing that's sure is right now. So I don't know how many times I fished a tournament or been out fishing and you went pre-fishing and Man, you just hammered them. You hammered them. And then torment day comes and you get to your area and the water's muddy. And you're like, well, they got to still be. And you push and you try to catch them and you try to do this and you try to do the next thing. And what you should do is pull up stakes. Let's go get somewhere away from this mud 
and our chances will probably be better. Now, I did that in a tournament years ago. We fished a tournament, uh, me and my buddy, and man, it was rain. The whole river was mudded up. And I hadn't caught them in a certain part of the river, but it was trashed. And that day we succeeded because we just kept looking until we found a couple little pockets of clearer water. And guess what? The fish were in those couple little pockets of clear water. And it didn't take a whole lot to win the tournament that day. I think we ended up finishing second in that tournament, but I was able to dump what I did in practice and fish the moment. So you gotta fish the moment. Trust your instincts. Don't, don't discard your instincts. Man, I discard my instincts so many times when everything inside of me is screaming, this is not right but I keep doing it because I had success doing it and in the past. We're trying to repeat success in a different set of circumstances. It doesn't work. So be able to fish the moment. You got to fish the moment. Now, understanding all of those things about how to be a better fisherman, I got to make this statement. Not all of us are going to be a Jacob Wheeler or a Kevin Van Dam, no matter how much time we spend on the water, because there is intrinsic traits that can make people better at certain things. Some people can run faster. Some people can jump higher. Some people can be, you know, a rocket scientist. Some people can't. So you can be the best that you can be by following these things that I'm telling you. Okay. We don't all have the best coordination, hand-eye coordination to cast. We don't all have the experience. That's something that you can add to. We don't all have the speed of processing of what's going on. We don't all have the best memories in the world, but you can take your particular set of tools that God has given you and you can be the best that you can be. If you have the want to, if you have the want to, and that's key, if you have the want to, you can be the best that you can be fishing. So I'll see you on the water. Again, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps to motivate you guys into uh, being a better fisherman. If you like my content, again, please hit the like button. If something you wanna follow on a regular basis, you'll get notifications, I think is how that works. Uh, then hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate it, it'll help you. It'll help me and have a blessed day.